And welcome back to Janky AF and Year of the Aerostar, episode number 112. Well, it's been a, a minute, as the kids say, since we've uh, debuted uh, uh, or, or um, <laughs> I've already, got, I've already I'm not a professional in any way, shape, or form, since we've uh, presented another episode of this fine program, Year of the Aerostar. I hope everyone has been well. Uh, thank you so much for your wonderful, beautiful comments on my little New Year's video that I threw together there. Just had some thoughts I wanted to get out and say hello to everybody because I've been editing this monster 3,000-word uh, essay comparing the Ford Aerostar to the Tesla Cybertruck. I would have liked to get that out in a more timely fashion, you know, get, get all the views for when the Cybertruck announcement was hot. Um, but you know, you can't rush perfection as they say, and um, you can't, you, you even more can't rush janky. <laughs> janky comes at its own speed. Um, but you know, suffice it to say that we've been delayed in bringing you Aerostar um, videos because we're working on Aerostar videos. So at least, you know, maybe that's some solace for you folks at home. I was just down in the city. Um, I got COVID, so that knocked me out for a few days. I'm behind schedule with work. I'm just literally living in a pile of my own filth here. I have my vitamin D, my magnesium, uh, you know, just down the line. It's, it's been a rough and tumble few uh, days and weeks here. But all that being said, you know, we're, I'm, I'm back in the new year. We're back in the new year with uh, a full head of steam. And there's so many things that I'm so excited about uh, coming into this year. And uh, least of all um, is another fine Aerostar to talk about. And, and before I introduce it, last thing I'll say is on the, on the topic of that Aerostar Cybertruck video, which I did a little sort of teaser, not teaser, but just announcement on my uh, whatever community page, I guess they call it. Uh, I, th in this episode, Stay tuned to the end or skip ahead right now, whichever you'd prefer. There will be a, uh, a sneak preview at the end of this episode of that video, which I'm very, very proud of. It took me longer than I wanted to edit it, like it always does. Um, but I think, um, you know, I haven't really even watched it start to finish yet. And sometimes I need to take a break from something and then really uh, imbibe it from a distance. But I think it came out really good and, I, and I'm really proud. And I think it, it actually... You know, on one hand, it's kind of like, uh, well, I'll just I'll just let everyone sort of decide what it is for themselves. But I'm very excited about it. So uh, at the end of this episode, there will be a sneak preview um, of that video, which will be coming out soon. I'm just putting the final sort of touches on it, getting all the ducks in a row and make sure, you know, when it actually launches, it's good to go. Uh, so that's fun. A um, couple other announcements, housekeeping at the end of the show, but you know, we've, we've gone so long that I feel like I can't go any, any longer, but I want, the last thing I'll say is for, for the sneak preview of this uh, series, we had to make it a good one and boy, is it a good one today. So without any further ado, here we have a 1987 Ford Aerostar passenger minivan listed for $4,200 in Kingman, Arizona. Now I have been to Kingman, Arizona. Uh, I included Kingman, Arizona in a song I wrote about the late great Tom Petty. And if I'm not mistaken, Kingman, Arizona is also where there's this strange little um, sort of restaurant diner situation that's like the John Madden Diner Hall of Fame or something like that. It was one of these little spots where, you know, it's big football playoff season right now, go Bills. Um, and he would not fly, John Madden, famous football announcer, coach, whatever. He would take RVs everywhere because he hated to fly. And apparently in Kingman, Arizona, there's this little spot that he always stopped at. Um, so they have like sort of a, a plaque or memorial or shrine to him there. Anyways, I've been to Kingman, Arizona, but what I did not see when I was in Kingman, Arizona was this 
absolutely breathtaking Ford Aerostar. Now this is just a fantastic picture. Right, right off the bat, I have to give the props to the seller. Excellent pictures, excellent description, and obviously excellent paint job. I mean, I've just never seen, I don't know if I've ever seen an Aerostar just quite this striking or nice. Um, and, you know, this thing was built some time ago and, and I think the paint still looks really great. So we'll get into the whole thing. I mean, you, you can kind of, you, you know, the vibe that it gives you initially pretty much tells the whole story, but we owe it to this beautiful van to, uh, you know, go through it and uh, pick it apart and critique it and, you know, just bask in its radiance. So seller's description. Uh, well, I guess I skip ahead. I have skipped ahead about this vehicle, 110,000 miles. So, you know, it's a show car, but it's still done a lot of miles. Automatic transmission, exterior color gold. You don't see that on an Aerostar too often. Interior color gray. The vehicle is paid off. I should hope so being in 1987, but you know, um, obviously a lot of money was invested in this vehicle, so it's possible, you know. Okay, seller description, 1987 Ford Aerostar custom low rider with hydraulics. Now we've featured so many different types, types of Aerostars on this program, um, and in editing this video, I sort of like, uh, the, the Cybertruck video, I sort of touched on that, you know, like police vehicles, fire vehicles, like ice cream trucks, um, wheelchair accessibility vehicles, you know, work vehicles, and then just your passenger vehicles, camping vehicles. I mean, you name it, the Aerostar has done it. Um, service vehicles. So, but we've never had like, you know, and, and I took my Aerostar to its first car show this year. We've never really had show car or, or um, you know, show vehicle. So that's actually something that um, and there's there's a couple of really cool ones floating out there. There's a couple of low riders floating out there and just like generally sort of like gussied up uh, fancy Aerostars. And this is maybe the nicest one I've ever seen. So I'm so excited that this, this popped up uh, and I was able to catch it because I already got the little notice that said, um, you know, this, this item is look is probably going to sell soon. And, 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 and during this time, it's been a while since we've talked about an Aerostar here. And there's been a couple of really good ones. Antonio, you sent me one on Craigslist, that camper. That's probably already gone. I, I'll check it again. But Janky, do thank you to you for sending that. There was a beautiful extended cargo that I actually screen grabbed. So I may be able to do sort of like um, sort of an archival version of that. But, but this one we got. So we should talk about it. Van was built in the 90s as a show car with custom candy paint airbrushing. Shaved door handles, doors hand, shaved doors handles. It's funny, it almost becomes a verb there. I shaved the doors handles. You know, the do they're, they're doors and those doors have handles. They're not door handles, they're the doors as handles. <laughs> so it actually kind of makes sense. Um, shaved doors handles, <laughs> custom subwoofer box, and set up for two pumps and four batteries. I'm, this is assuming related relating to the you know, air suspension. Engine starts and runs, but has a transmission or power steering leak. One of those seems slightly more um, serious than the other. I mean, the, the power steering pumps on Aerostars. I just 1989 Aerostar just had a great little meme uh, about the power steering pumps in Aerostars are just known to be you know squeakers. Uh, vehicle will be sold as is and will need to be towed. Both hydraulics have been gone through and just need to be wired up with solenoids, switches, and batteries. Subwoofer box will be empty. So you're not getting like all the goodies in this van. You know, it's still like a, a, a slight project. I mean, you know, it was built in the 90s. It's an 87 Aerostar. You know, this is all painted up so it looks, you know, well, obviously by the grill, if you, if you know what you're looking for, you can tell that it's like a, within the first three years, or, you know, it's possible someone just put that grill in there to make, to, because it does kind of fit the vibe of the aesthetic of the Aerostar a little bit better. Um, but because it's in such nice condition and because it's a custom paint job, it doesn't, it looks much more nineties and eighties. This paint style looks more nineties and eighties to me. So 87 though, it's only the second year of production. Uh, we'll assume that it probably has, you know, the, the three liter, um, V six, but it's, it's 
it's possible this even has the might, this might have the four cylinder the Lima, which my 86 Aerostar has because um, they did make that with an automatic transmission or it could have the 2.8 carbureted the cologne or it could have the 3.0 we just don't know um, probably not that important considering what we're you know this car is really about like sort of the the show car transformation that it's been through um, but the, you know the nice thing about it is that even though obviously you know your whole hydraulic system is going to have to be gone through and you're you're if you want to put a stereo system in it, you're going to have to sort of redo that. Um, mechanicals sound like they're pretty good, you know, but the paint still looks really nice. You know, all things considered, we'll get into some more close-ups, but the paint, all things considered, looks really nice. So at least it was like sort of preserved in that regard. It looks like it, you know, hopefully it was garage. I see a little sun fade going on at the top right, at the, right, right off the bat. But, you know, overall... Again, $4,200, you know, you couldn't paint this, you couldn't take a, a car and paint it this nicely for $4,200, like not even close today. So, you know, the paint job alone is worth the price of the vehicle. Um, and it is quite the paint job. So vehicle will be available to show on January 28th until the 30th. So it's not even ready to show um, until the 28th. So that's interesting. So I don't know how Facebook knows this vehicle is going to sell so quickly if it's not even going to be able to be shown to the 28th. It gives me a little bit more time to go back to Kingman, Arizona. Um, but, you know, things are a little busy right now here at Janky uh, AF. All right, let's look at these pictures. Again, beautiful pictures. Like, look at this just gorgeous, um, you know, arid desert sky with these beautiful cumulus puffy clouds i mean it just it looks like a painting like it looks like fake you know it's just like oh the way the sun is shining it looks so perfect so i'm uh, you know just the, this listing alone just to be able to capture this vehicle it looks like it's just at someone's house um and they've they've you know brought it out into the street um let's see uh it starts and runs but it's yeah so it, it obviously moves under its own power um so I don't think these pictures even, they're very nice pictures, but clearly even these pictures do not do the vehicle justice because it looks like there's all sorts of blues and greens in this like sort of pearlescent paint. Maybe that's what they mean by the candy paint dancing around in the sun. I mean, you know, Arizona is a good place for this car because this paint must just pop and glisten and, and, and little metallic flakes and color shifts, like color shifts coming out when you look, I mean, to see this thing in person, I bet it's just outstanding. And then you even have these sort of flame motifs going on on the glass. And, and again, like, it, yeah, it's a little sun fade at the top here, but all the flames, they go all the way under the roof and everything. Um, and, and the color scheme itself, this beautiful, brilliant gold with blacks and purples and reds and greens and blues like fantastic color scheme i mean just a just an amazing looking vehicle the one thing that jumps out at me is um your mirrors are not stock and it's funny how they integrate they were ma managed to integrate these aftermarket mirrors into this little pillar here now maybe this pillar kind of snaps on over the existing one but i thought that was a really sort of clean install to give it something um, you know, just a little bit smaller and, and sleeker than the factory mirror. I mean, I think the, 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 the factory mirrors painted like in this gold would also look very, very nice. But um, clearly, I, I'm, not, I'm not here to critique this paint job. I mean, this is fantastic. I love this big triangular dip here that comes in and then squares off. And I love these little sort of like um, these little rounded haunches. You know, I don't know who designed this, but those little things are... And then, and then it ends up right at the edge of your taillight. So, you know, the Aerostar has contours that will kind of guide you. Like, and there's this another, the, the big rounding arch here, you can see it sort of slowly trails off. But stuff like this, like putting in these little custom um, blips and swoops and curves and dips and doodles and triangles, like all that stuff is... You really have to have an eye for that because it's, you know, once you start painting this car and all the taping and all that, like... You got to really know what you're doing. I have a tremendous, you know, I am a painter. I paint things, but I paint things in like sort of an artistic, um, organic style. Like these people who are able to create these 
airbrushing and you know with the taping and the and the precision that they're able to get and yet blending of color within that precise lines i, I really have a deep appreciation for it i could never do anything like this um and it's quite astounding now <laughs> this this is I, I maybe this is a reference to something that i'm not understanding i mean i guess it kind of looks like the joker right um, way ahead of its time for 1987. Then you have these like sort of ghoulish goblin type ghost things in the background here. Um, and then it's big sword. And I mean, this it's maybe this is an ICP thing. I don't know. Um, I guess maybe, yeah, I don't, again, but then there's like flower petals. Again, I'm sure it's something very obvious and maybe I've hit on it and just by guessing. But if you know exactly if this is like a specific reference, I'm not, you know, like um uh knowledgeable on sort of like the culture of lowriders or airbrush painting or any of those sort of like if whether this is icp or, or joker or whatever sort of this is like a known entity i'm not aware of it and i readily admit that um it's just not in my wheelhouse but from an artistic standpoint, I certainly have like a great deep appreciation for it. I mean, just the color blending of these flower petals is absolutely incredible. Um, not my cup of tea, you know, the, the aesthetics of this graphic, um, quite honestly. And, I, and, and that being said, I love the rest of it. Um, this is a little in your face, but, but if I bought this vehicle, I think I would be obligated to keep this the way it was because you know just as a time capsule and a, a statement piece and to honor the original artist who did it i think i would just like have to keep this exactly as is now one thing i want to point out here and maybe we'll see it better in a little shot but look at these little like eyelashes on these headlights and eyebrows i guess you could say too did they make these? I mean, are these custom or are these, this, it looks like, you know, like how a, a, a traffic light has that little sort of awning and archway over the top of it. That's what the, uh, these are for the lights. And they add such a cool element to it. Okay, here's the back. We'll go back and revisit that later. Here's your, you know, your, your air system for your hydraulics to lift your um, wheels. And even these are sort of like, they look funny, they look like paint sprayers um are lifted off the ground and not just like sitting on the in the corner you know they're lifted off the ground with these welded beams um and you have your subwoofer box here with your even the speaker cabinet thing sort of has flames on it it looks like obviously you know pretty uh expensive units and sounds like they'd have to be gone through and um you know if you really wanted to take this over the top you could probably take this whole unit out and maybe um, paint the in, the interior of the the floor of this vehicle. Um, I just want to get a little look here because it looks like this. Now I wonder what trim level this is because this has the trip computer in here. So for an '87, that was like kind of a cool feature to have that trip computer in here. Um, but anyways, again, I don't know. I can't really tell you what's going on here other than I see you know you. Ha I know that some. I think some air systems only have one compressor and it looks like these have two um, now on like a low rider maybe that's maybe that's necessary to be able to independently control um, you know front and back or each of your corners um, but it seems like some sort of you know relatively for the time certainly I'm sure high dollar system um, so sinister hydraulics maybe even like a custom a custom kit so that's kind of cool. And then, I mean, obviously, like if you're going to have these uh, hydraulics, you're going to want like sort of some, some matching impressive uh, sound system. Here's a better shot of those little like eyelids I was talking about. This is so cool. Like I would love, you know, and this is why the Aerostar in some ways it's, it's, I wish it had more aftermarket support. I mean, those, those little uh, spoilers that go on the, the roof line of the vehicle, these little eyebrow brackets, like mud flaps, like even just basic bumpers. It could be so cool to be able to, you know, chrome uh, fender flares. Like it'd be so cool to, to be able to order these parts off the shelf so people could customize their Aerostars. Um, and it looks like my, <laughs> my audio uh, recording system has died. So it's gonna be going off the phone and it's gonna to be totally echoey in this room. Um, now what I could try to do 
And this is janky for you. So let's uh, turn on my other recorder. I almost used this recorder and I didn't. I thought the battery would make it, but you know, such is life. Uh, anyways, I'm just bemoaning the fact that, you know, there's not more readily, uh, more readily available Aerostar aftermarket parts. Um, but say la vie, but these, these little chrome insert pieces and how they clip on, looks like they even cover up the top part of the light with chrome. Just a really cool, subtle piece. You know, the, the, obviously the paint job and the wheels, um, you know, really shine on this vehicle, but there's these little touches too, these little subtleties and you don't, you don't see, I mean, you can see just by how brightly this is reflected. Like obviously the paint, the majority of the paint is still in really good condition. Even this bumper, which, you know, these bumpers really get mucked up. And, um, all right, here we go, ready? So, I'm gonna hit this. Syncing audio again, this is a little behind the scenes in three, two, one. So hopefully uh, the audio just got a little better for you all at home. I'm on my handheld recorder now. <laughs> it's just so janky. I love it. Um, another thing I wanted to point out, which is interesting, is that I believe these tires are 13s. I think this says 155-80-13. Um, so that's actually smaller than stock. Now stock uh, wheels on an Aerostar are 14 inch. And you see a lot of people going bigger, but it's funny that they actually went smaller. Now, I'm not sure if, you know, for the sake of a low rider, it's just more convenient to have 13 or if these wheels were just 13s. And I wonder how they found these to, ad to adapt to the bolt pattern. Um, maybe there's some advantage or just some uh, conventional wisdom to having 13 inch tires, or you can just make it go lower, you know, like if you're, if you have air suspension, you can lower the car 13 inch just makes, just means you can go that much lower. So maybe that's the simple, the simple thing here, but these gold, um, I love like sort of spoke wheels, um, and these gold spoke wheels with the white wall tires and they look like pretty new tires and maybe they just don't have any, that many miles on them, but, um, you know, that, that really completes the look. I mean, I love these wheels and tires, even if this weren't a low rider, um, just, just the paint and the aesthetics and the wheels and the little accessories all make this thing really, really cool. Here's a, here's a nice shot of your, uh, sort of, uh, eyebrow there, eyelash there. Now I wonder if we can, I think this might even be the four cylinder because this looks a lot like my air box and I think that's where my radiator cap is too on my 86 Aerostar. So wouldn't that be something if this were just a little four banger with 13 inch tires? <laughs> um, okay, your interior last shot here is uh, gray, which doesn't necessarily match the exterior. And that's the last thing you could do if you really wanted to take this thing over the top is you could you know re redo the entire interior to match the exterior. However, um, the interior looks to be in quite good condition. Um, obviously, the, the stock gray with red piping, very, very cool. Doesn't really fit the exterior, but I don't know. You have your red flame, so in a way, maybe it kind of does, you know? Um, but again, just the fact that it's in really nice shape here. And, and look at that. Even with this giant subwoofer in here, you can still fit five people. So, you know, the Aerostar... Never relenting in its practicality, no, no matter how impractical of a um, <laughs> box you try to uh, turn it into. Um, and of course, the great metal license plate cover. Um, that's like another great little um, thing. Now, I'm actually a little surprised, and maybe it hasn't, we don't see it, but I'm a little surprised that this wouldn't have sort of a metal chain steering wheel i love a metal chain steering wheel that would really sort of like complete the look like man you really don't see those anymore but that is a really cool little touch too so you know back in the 90s someone put a lot of time and energy and money into this ford aerostar and it survived and it's still here and um it could be yours for just forty two hundred dollars and I really hope whoever buys this sort of appreciates it and takes care of it and doesn't like, you know, mess with it. Um, there's other Aerostars out there if you just need like a work van to haul stuff in. Like I hope this actually comes back to its glory. And if you were to like just, you know, put a little bit more time and energy and get this thing totally back to its like sort of 
glory days state where everything's functioning, everything's running good. I mean, taking this thing to a Radwood or even to a, like a modern lowrider show, I would imagine, you'd, or any car show for that matter, you'd probably be the bell of the ball because, I mean, the paintwork is just phenomenal. And again, the Aerostar, its shape is so iconic and timeless. It looks great. It looks fantastic uh, in this livery with the chrome accents still like shimmering really brightly. I mean, it just, it, it jumps off the screen. So um, a really special one. And I wanted to capture that. And I'm, I'm glad we did, even though it's been a little bit of a janky ride to get there. So there you have it. This just absolutely fantastic. Thank you for whoever man you know created this thing i'm not sure if this is the original owner or what but um you know they made over two million aero stars i think it's two million twenty nine thousand five hundred seventy seven i'm familiar with that number now after i've having looked it up so many times for this video i've been editing and uh everyone unique and this is uh, certainly a special one and one that's held on and and survived and made it and is still here with us so uh, a great chance for someone to to scoop this up and have a little part of Aerostar history. Okay, thank you so much for watching. Uh, as promised, we will now give you a little bit of a sneak preview of, um, I don't even have a, a title for this video. I've been calling it in my edit just Cyberstar, which is the combination of Cybertruck and Aerostar. Um, but basically it's comparing the Cybertruck, the Aerostar, the video itself will um, sort of give it away and if you're already familiar with this channel and this program then you know you got nothing to worry about you'll I think you'll enjoy it because <laughs> without giving too much away one one angle you could look at it as is from is uh, it's like kind of basically just trolling cyber truck enthusiasts into uh, consuming Aerostar content for 20 minutes, <laughs> which I thought, you know, that's the subtext. And it's like, well, I think is hilarious. I think it's so funny. Uh, the whole thing is just sort of like an inside joke, but that's actually not that genuine because if you take it at its face, it's actually, I think, a fairly robust and thorough and accurate and reasonable um, comparison of these two vehicles and why they are actually in a lot of ways really, really similar. Um, the last thing I'll say is I just, you know, months and months and months of fussing around and fighting with the people at Etsy and Printify, and I have had this idea for so long, and I wanted to turn it into an NFT, and then the crypto thing just, I, you know, I probably still could, and I know crypto's going back up, but then I was like, well, an NFT, like, instead of making an NFT, like, why don't I just put it on t-shirts and then anyone who wants one can buy one, you know, and then like maybe I'll make like an original one-off version of this. But it's a little meme that I made. I'm getting, you know, you know, here at Janky AF, we do a lot of different things. Um, we paint toilets, we make artwork. I mean, the artwork you see behind me. But this is a, um, a meme and it's Mark. Zuckerberg or fart suck a turd <laughs> as I call him and uh, it says when you poop your pants in the metaverse the poop is still in your pants <laughs> now over the vacation uh, me and my sweetheart, sweetheart watched all three Matrix movies so obviously there's a little bit of a Matrix reference in there I thought it was hilarious I've never made a meme before and, um, you know, this one speaks to me with the whole toilet thing. And so anyways, um, this is a long way of saying that I have merch now and it's not just this. I know this isn't really car related, um, but there's an Etsy shop, uh, which I can put the address of and, uh, or you can just go to jankypainting.com and that, that's the whole, that's my whole, uh, the information super highway rest stop is jankypainting.com. Everything's there. You can get anywhere the, from that website. So a little plug, you know, but I was really proud of this. Like I, I really thought this is a contribution to the memosphere and there's all, the, I, I never talk about it. Um, cause you know, I'm not really a huckster, but there's like all sorts of cool, you know, shirts and stuff. And I, I do a lot of graphic design. So, and there's, I'm always throwing more up and there's, um, you know, that's, it's a whole thing, but, uh, mostly we just want to talk about arrow stars. So that's what we do. And we appreciate all of you. And, um, you know, if, if you want to check it out, great. If not, whatever, that's great too. We're just happy here, 
uh, here on Janky AF talking about Aerostars with us. So that's it. Hopefully the camera's still rolling. We're on our second microphone. <laughs> um, I guess I'll say uh, without further ado, um, well, thank you for watching and we'll have another one coming for you very soon. But in the meantime, um, without further ado, please enjoy this uh, exclusive uh, sneak preview of my, um, you know, uh, definitive comparison between the Tesla Cybertruck and Ford Aerostar. Janky do thanky. On November 30th, 2023, the much anticipated, much awaited, and much delayed Tesla Cybertruck became available to its first batch of private owners. As a small unknown car YouTuber, I don't have the access or clout to be able to drive one, though if you or your uncle Gary happen to be watching this and want to give me a go, my email address is in the description. But as the owner of not one but two Ford Aerostars, a car or truck or van or vehicle that broke the mold almost 40 years ago, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what's in store, because as I will lay out, the similarities between these two vehicles are uncanny. Stop. One small step for man, one 